following the horrific attacks on children and their childcare worker and the subsequent violence and vandalism in the centre of Dublin, Thursday felt like a watershed moment in our capital city. Tonight we debate the fallout and examine how we can turn this tide of anger and fear. How do we restore a sense of safety and security in our capital city? How do we police our changing society? And the migration issue isn't going anywhere, so how do we talk about it and better manage it? Now, before we start tonight, I want to say that the thoughts of all of us here on the Upfront team are with all of the victims of that horrific stabbing on Parnell Square East on Thursday afternoon and their families, particularly the young girl and her care worker who remain in hospital tonight. And I want to bring in the audience on this first. Can I get a sense from our audience tonight about how you felt in the aftermath of what happened on Thursday afternoon and as the events unfolded into Thursday evening? Yes, yourself. Just one second, we'll get a microphone to you. Yeah, I, I, I felt that it, a lot of shame um, that, you know, on our capital street there would be such lawlessness and violence. Um, you know, I was born after the Good Friday Agreement. I never thought I would experience such violence. And I, I was caught up on that street that evening after work. And the, the imagery, imagery and the videos do not do it justice. It was frankly very terrifying. And I, I believe that the people that are out that night did not do their cause justice. Um, I, I believe there should be a dialogue, a peaceful dialogue. And um, I, I think this is what we should discuss tonight. OK, OK, thank you for that. Uh, anybody else? Uh, yes, yourself. Sorry, I'll, I'll just go to the back. I'll come to you in a moment, yes. I think my immediate feeling was just this stress because I knew people who were in town at the time and they said they couldn't get out. All the buses were cancelled. The Lewis was cancelled. A lot of friends had to, like, find somewhere else to stay. So, and I was with friends at the time and I could just see everyone checking their phones and just, like, the fires and everything just coming up on the screens. But just in the aftermath of that, I just think we've seen some kind of like a lot of like name calling, putting blame out there, maybe like some language that isn't like things that we want to have said in society. So I don't know if the response has been entirely helpful, like call calling people scumbags and thugs. OK, thank you for that. Yes. Can we get a mic down here to the front? Tony, yeah. Yes, I felt afraid. I felt embarrassed for Ireland and I felt the thought of my colleagues working in the city centre, that some of them had to sleep in the hospital. Uh, is, yes, yourself. Yeah, um, so Thursday, it was obviously shocking and um, people are horrified, but and I work in Dublin city centre and I'm in there most evenings and everyone in there can say that they've felt it throughout 2023, like there's been a sense that it's about to happen. And Helen McEntee appeared on primetime on Thursday night and she said, Miriam asked her, can you say the streets are not safe? She said, this isn't about the streets not being safe. And, you know, it's just shocking to hear that. Like, how, how, how are the streets, how can she say that, that the streets aren't safe? So there's a sense that, like, you know, it's like the, this hasn't been tackled, you know, it's been going on for months. So um, a lot of people who are in the city centre every day are not that shocked that this happened. OK. Yeah. Just yourself. Yeah. Shocked and saddened in equal measure. But I felt this was coming. And I discussed it with a few friends in the green room. And the same thing. They felt this was brewing for some time. Tragically, it was such a, a horrible incident that caused it to happen. And it is shocking for our country to, to finish up. And that's, you know. Yeah. OK. Thank you for that. Well, let's go to that incident then and to yourself, uh, Leo Ralph, just here down the front. Or, thank you. Leo Ralph, you're a nurse and you were actually on your way to your own graduation in the Gresham Hotel on Thursday afternoon, on your birthday as it happened, when you realised something was happening. Yes, um, it, it was a day of, um, it was a celebratory day for me. Um, I was happy, I was euphoric and, you know, happy about that day. I've been looking forward to it for, for a couple of months now. And um, witnessing that, um, that horrible experience there um, with, with, a, with, a, with, with a girl there, when, when, when I saw that happen there, I, I didn't have a choice. So and you were there immediately after the, the, the incident, immediately after the stabbing? No, I was there. Um, As so it was happening. I was late going to the um, going to, to for, for my graduation, and um, I saw everything there. What happened there? And then I just saw 
like children going towards me. They were screaming and they were terrified about what happened there. And then at the end of that, I saw this girl and at that moment, I didn't have a choice. I, don't, I didn't want to tell that I was a nurse there, that I'm a nurse. I didn't want to. Um, but then I had no choice. But I said, I needed to have the authority for that, for that child. So I said, I'm a nurse. And it was all goosebumps for me. I was almost sobbing when I saw the, when I saw the child there. And I just needed to check her and um, do the, the, the help that I needed to do. Yeah, and we know, and you were able to use your medical training to assist her while they were waiting for the, the ambulance and the paramedics to arrive. It must have been some relief for you, though, when, when, when you were able to step back and, and uh, allow the, the paramedics in and she was, she was taken away. Actually, I was questioning myself. Um, I, w I was asking myself, I could have probably done more, and, but my counsellor said that it's normal to question ourselves in these times of, um, you know, um, th these kinds of things. Uh, it's uh, traumatising. What was going through your head then, as, as uh, you know, as the, you, you, walk, you were walking away from this, this shocking, shocking event? There's only one thing that's going in my head that time. It's just about the life of the person, the life of the child. Like, I, I just, I, I was just wishing, I hope the, the child survives. And that's the only wish um, that I, I wanted on that day.